Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. In this video, we're going to continue exploring uh, the RC cloud platform. So this is video number three. Number one was model deployment. Number two was model merging. And in this one, we're going to cover uh, continuous pre-training or how to add new domain knowledge to an existing model by training it a little more, okay? So um, we're going to start from a, a, an existing model and we're going to train it on a corpus of um, uh, energy related documents. OK, a collection of PDF files. So we'll see how that goes, what to uh, how to prepare the. So we'll see how to prepare the, the data for training and then we'll run the training operation. And as in the previous videos, I will do this with the user interface, the web app first, and then we'll do it with the Python SDK. Okay, let's get started. In this example, I would like to train a Llama 3 model. So the base model, the base Llama 3 8 billion model on a corpus of energy related documents. Maybe, you know, uh, my, uh, my goal is to build um, a chatbot for energy applications. So different steps would be required, but the first would be, hey, um, I've got a large collection of energy related documents. Can my base model learn from those so that uh, it just you know, generates better answers to my uh, domain questions? So that's what continuous pre-training is all about. Okay, so of course we do need data for this. So what I've done is uh, uh, download a bunch of um, uh, reports PDF files from the uh, International Energy Agency website, as well as some um, articles and research reports from the Energy Journal. Okay, and um, we can see them here. I have a total of about, I think, 300 files. And as you can see here, I put them in an S3 bucket, right? And that's where RC Cloud needs data to be for training. Um, so we can have subfolders, we can have different file formats. Here it's all PDF files, but um, you can have uh, you can have HTML, you can have uh, CSV, you can have um, a very different formats. Uh, you can see the full up-to-date list in our documentation. Um, so that's the first step. Find the documents that have the good knowledge that you need the model to learn. Um, and put that in a format that uh, RC Cloud can ingest. But again, the, the most popular formats are supported. And put that stuff in an Amazon S3 bucket. Okay, fine. So that's that's simple enough. The next step is related to permissions, because RC Cloud needs the ability to read those files, and those files live in your S3 bucket in your AWS account. So we need to give RC Cloud. The permission to read right so going to your bucket settings and uh, this is probably not something you would do yourself i guess you have you know a, a devops engineer or um, you know an it admin to help you with this but just to show you how to do it right um, you would go to permissions and you need to set this nice thing called a bucket policy and as the name implies the bucket policy will um, allow you to set permissions on the bucket okay so i'll go quick if you know this already no need for me to explain for an hour and if you don't well i guess that's not the focus of this video but just so you know you need to set a bucket policy um, and this is again in the documentation so what we're really doing here is we're allowing this AWS account, which is one of our RC accounts, to uh, perform read and list operations, right? So list a bucket, get the objects in the bucket on this particular uh, bucket and its uh, prefixes, right? So what that says is RC Cloud running in this account, AWS account, can do all those S3 APIs, list, get, etc., on all files stored here. OK, so you can add this in the console. You can add this with the APIs. Again, uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, find your friendly DevOps 
engineer and uh, they will know exactly what to do here, right? Unless you do this, you won't be able to use the bucket uh, to, uh, to train your model. So that's a really important step, okay? But as you can see, the policy is not super difficult. Okay, so that was the slightly crazy part. That's the most difficult part in the whole process. Now let's see how we can actually uh, ingest that data into RC Cloud. So if you go to the Datasets tab, click on Create, um, and select Pre-Training, because that's what we want to do, right? We'll do fine-tuning in another video. This is pre-training, adding new knowledge um, not trying to do alignment, just adding knowledge. So um, strictly unsupervised learning here. Uh, give it a name. Okay, so let's call this one. Uh, well, I guess I'll continue, right? Uh, Julian demo uh, continuous pre-training. The URL of the data set. Okay, this is it. The tokenizer to use for that data, okay, which is a critical step. So, well, make sure to select the one that is compatible uh, with the model you're gonna train. So in this case, well, it's the, it is actually the tokenizer for that model, so that's fine. Okay, and then just click on create. And we can see here, um, this should be reasonably fast. Uh, we'll see our PDF files being ingested. Okay, so we have a total of 306 documents. And they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be ingested, the text is going to be extracted from those PDF files. And, uh, and that text will be turned into tokens. And we'll see the, the token count increasing here, right? So let's give it a minute, I'll pause the video and we can see how many tokens we have here. We're almost done ingesting, 95% uh, complete. This took five, six minutes, so it should complete hopefully in the next few seconds. And we'll see the, the total number of tokens. All right, there we go, okay. So 306 PDF files, uh, a little more than 10 million tokens, okay? For the record, that's too small. Um, so I just use a, a smaller corpus for a, a quick demo. Uh, and by the way, you should be able to use uh, my bucket. Um, you won't be able to list the bucket yourself, um, but RC Cloud should be able to read it. So if you, if you wanna run this with the bucket uh, I use here, uh, go. <laughs> Uh, check out the URI in, in you know from a minute ago. Uh, you should be able to do that. Okay, so I've got my data set. It's been ingested, um, and now we can move on to training. So let's go to the training tab, uh, and let's create a pre-training. Okay, so we'll call this one uh, again Julian Demo CPT. Let's go and pick. Um, Llama, hey, why not Llama 3.1 for a change? Yeah, it's now available in, in RC. And let's just create a pre-training. And we'll just go and grab our data set and start pre-training. And that's all there is to it. How amazing is that, right? So as you can see, just a few clicks, and don't worry, we'll we'll do the, the the Python API afterwards. It's just as simple. But that's really all there is to it. Um, and uh, and now I think if you've watched uh, the previous videos, you start to see the you know the philosophy of uh, of this platform, uh, which is having a collection of base models, um, having data sets, um, injecting new knowledge with continuous pre-training, or 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 merging, or actually both. Right? Uh, we could use maybe this model to merge, right? That'd be interesting, like merge energy and biomedical, just like we did in the previous video. And this is all just a few clicks or just a few uh, very simple API calls. So, um, you know, very, very simple. And you don't need deep um, AI skills or ML skills to do this. 
So let's uh, let's give it a minute to start, and uh, and then we'll sh hopefully we'll start uh, seeing the loss uh, curve um, decreasing, showing that the model is actually learning this corpus. So training is in progress, and we can visualize the the training loss here. Okay, so yeah, we're so we're training for one epoch uh, as usual with. Uh, uh, with uh, with pre-training, okay. So I'll just leave this uh, on for a bit, and um, and we will see uh, we'll see progress here, right? Well, it's decreasing. It's a good sign. <laughs> Could be a little jittery, but yeah, generally going down. So, like I said, this is this is a bit uh, this is a bit too small, right? Ten million tokens is uh, is a bit small. You probably want, I would say, you know, at least a hundred million tokens, um, and that sounds like a big number. But um, um, keep in mind that there, I have only three hundred PDF files in here. Um, some of them are larger, but a lot of them are, you know, maybe ten pages. So it shouldn't be a problem to find uh, a large uh, quantity of data in your organization, right? And keep in mind, it's not just PDF files. It could be, it could be HTML, it could be CSV, it could be, uh, it could be all kinds of things in there. Plain text, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? And you can see this is this is pretty fast, right? Uh, we're uh, yeah two thirds into the into the training job now. And once this is complete, uh, hopefully we have added some uh, energy domain knowledge to to Llama 3.1, right? So I'll just pause here and wait for training to complete, and we'll see the, the final result. Okay, so training is complete. It took uh, three and a half minutes, and yeah, the training loss did go down, right? Again. Um, this is too small a data set and we would need more data, but we see that uh, the, the pre-training is working. The model is uh, is learning how to predict the, the next token on this particular um, energy um, data set that we built, right? So what would the next step be? So we could deploy the model, but um, it's not aligned, right? So it wouldn't be too good at, uh, at instruction following. It would probably... Uh, you know, generate you know very short answer, very long answers, um, and so the next step would be either to merge this um, maybe with an instruction following model, right? So you could try and merge this with a you know an instruction um, flavor of uh, of Llama three, uh, a little bit like we did in the in the model merging video when we merged the the, the biomedical Mistral with the instruction Mistral, and uh, and hopefully you would uh, automatically get the instruction following ability of the of the llama instruct model or we could go and align this model we could have an alignment data set for this and and go go and do that right so not going to do a uh, deployment here i'm going to switch to the um, to the python sdk so back in a notebook uh, link in the video description and just like before we need to define our uh, RC API key. We need to install the Python SDK. Um, define the location of our data set, right? So same as before. And again, you should be able to use this. You won't be able to list it. The bucket policy, we've seen this before, same, uh, same example. Um, and this is how you would apply it to your bucket. Um, with uh, the AWS Python SDK Boto 3, right? But again, if you aren't sure, uh, go find a friendly DevOps engineer to help you out. Next, we need to upload our uh, our corpus to the to RC Cloud. Okay, so uh, the dataset name, the S3 location, the name of the tokenizer, and uh, the block size, which is a model parameter. Okay, so let's go do this. And as usual, we have a status API to go check that things are working fine. 
So once this is done, we can launch pre-training. I'll just go and do that as well, right? Um, very simple. So start pre-training, pre-training name, dataset name, and the base model name. Okay. All right. So let's launch all of that, and um, and I'll come back when it's complete. Okay. So we uploaded the corpus. And then I launched pre-training with the start pre-training API, which is pretty straightforward as you can see. Pre-training name, dataset name, model name. And then looking at the, the web app, we could see the job starting, we could see the laws going down, etc. And so when the job is complete, uh, we have a model and I just went ahead and deployed it just for the sake of it. Uh, and we've seen deployment before in the previous videos, start deployment, deployment name, pre-training name. And I prompted it, is solar energy a good way to achieve net zero and 700 words? So I am getting, um, I am getting text generation here, right? Uh, and it's proper English and everything, but uh, there is repetition. Uh, it's ignoring the 100 word directive uh, probably because this model has not been aligned. It's still a base language model, so it generates, you know, until it hits the, I guess, the maximum number of tokens. And uh, and the next logical step would be to run, um, you know, alignment and instruction following, etc. And that's what we're gonna do in the next video. Okay. And yeah, just make sure we stop the deployment when we're done. All right, so I hope you like this uh, example of uh, continuous pre-training. Uh, you saw how to bring uh, uh, your files, in this case PDF files, to an S3 bucket. Use that bucket as a starting point for a continuous pre-training job. And how, you know, generally simple this was. Just a couple of APIs, nothing, nothing complicated. And, uh, and that's how you would use uh, continuous pre-training to add new domain knowledge to a model. And you could run several rounds to refine the model or to uh, just add more domain knowledge to it, okay? Again, the next step would be model alignment and we're gonna look at this one next, okay? So thanks for watching and keep rocking.